applause. We want to welcome the Trinity Falls Drummer Group. And everything that good that comes to that. But in my time, we made a lot of mistakes. Hmm. Daddy, look at this one. No, let's go back. Yes, this, no, this one, this one. Isn't that Auntie Amma? Oh, yes, that was Auntie Amma. Wow. That was when she was in school. She was beautiful. She though. was the hottest chick on campus. Wow. She was very prayerful. Until one day he met one guy. Auntie Amma. Hello. Oh, hello. My name is James Bond. Hey. AKA hey. Ricky Z. Ricky Z. Hey. Hey. You are Ricky Z. Hey. 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 Happily ever after. Oh no! There was nothing happy to live after. Am oh. I Ricky never got married? Oh. But they were committed enough to commit a lot of abortion that could even fill the sea. What? <laughs> now look at how she looks, so tattered and confused. We don't even know what has become of her. Before, after. Before. What a shock! <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> You don't even know what happened to Uncle Kwesi. Yes, Daddy, Uncle Kwesi. Isn't that him? Oh, yes, that was Kwesi. Shadele, bro, Shadele, bro. Kwesi could pray for 200 hours if he gave him the opportunity. 200 hours? Yes, until one day. Shadele, bro, Shadele, baby. Shadele, baba, baba, kadala, baba. Ribo, shianti, kakapa. Tu, 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 tu. Nah, I got to change. I got to change. I got to change and move forward. That's how Kwesi never became the pastor we expected him to become. This is gargantually unprecedented. <clears throat> My daughter. Daddy. But hold on, Daddy. What, what happened to you? How come you're also not enjoying the good life as well? <clears throat> when your mother left me, I gave up everything. I was so angry with God. I decided not to worship me anymore. I took to drinking. But now I regret. <laughs> My daughter, you are destined to live all the good life and everything that good that comes with it. I share with you so that you don't commit the mistakes that we did. Hmm. Hmm. You may never know limited. Daddy, hold on. Is it a company in Accra? How many workers are there in that company? I may never know limited. I may never know. I may never know limited. I may never know. Hi, baby. Huh? My name is Dr. John. <laughs> <laughs> Three IAs and eight assignments. No! You should see the latest hair you found. So that means her. Oh, Daddy, you said it last year!
give it up for the drama group. These are real stars. These are film stars. Give it up for them. Hallelujah. We want to welcome the spiders again to give us one of their nicest ever dance. If it's in your socks, go down into your socks and take your offering. Wherever it is, take your offering and lift up your offering. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you. Those at the back, you're not taking your offering. Lift up your offering. I'm waiting for the hands that are down, so we pray. Lift up your offering. Worship stars, lift up your offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give because we love you. Father, Lord, bless our offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Two. Mic not working. Hello? One, two. Okay. One, two. One, two.
that Jesus has done for us. When we think for your mercy, for your grace, for your love and atonement. Every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday. Falling in love with you has never been a mistake. What a friend I have in Jesus. When I think of your love, when I think of your love, I cannot take If there's any empty seats beside you in front, please raise your hand. Please, those at the back, can you please fill the empty spaces in front? Let's just do this in two minutes. If there's any empty space, please move in front. Oh, please, let's be fast. Any empty space? As we welcome the stars, please just make it fast. There, there. One, two. One, two. One 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 two. the stars. Do we want to see more stars? Let's, we want to welcome on stage Rebecca and Kobe to give us a song. Rebecca and Kobe. to your friends, your very close friends. Well, I don't enjoy it too, so I just want to sing that I'll be thinking of you and I'll be praying for you too. I'll be thinking of 
you, thinking of you. And though we're far apart, you're in my heart. And there you'll always stay till we meet again someday. I'll be thinking of you, you.
never mind I keep thinking about you all the time Thinking of you Oh, give it up for them, give it up for them again And let's invite the stars to give us a song The stars to give us a song One
his fire that still waited patiently. that he gave his only son you must believe in him 
the stars. Give it up for the stars. Please, if there's any seats by you that's in front, please move forward. If there's any seats by you, please lift up your hand. Please, there are people, if you are sitting at the back, please move in front. There's a seat here, please move in front. We don't want any interruption during the preaching. Please move in front. There's an empty seat here. I believe this is the time we've been waiting for. And I'm not even worthy to introduce who is coming. But with a standing ovation, I want us to welcome our father, Bishop Daggerwood Mills. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. And thank you for your Holy Spirit. We ask you to guide us by your power and your word into your perfect will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Can we close this door? Right. Are you excited to be here this morning? Turn with me to. Um, do you know what? Do you, do you want to know where to turn to? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. What have we been talking about? How to do what? To possess the land. Turn with me to Joshua. Chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. How to possess the land. Amen. Now, this morning, I want us to continue from where we left off last week. We were talking about possessing the land. And how many of us know that God has something great for us? It's a good land, a promised land. And the best way to get into the promised land is to start going into the promised land early. Because when you go early... You start moving in the promises of the promised land early. But if you start roaming through the unpromised land, by the time you start making your way back to the promised land, you may not even get to the river Jordan before your time is up. Do you understand? So you need to head straight for the Jordan because as soon as you can cross the Jordan River, you are entering the promised land. Now, what is the promised land? The promised land is the life that God has planned for you and I on earth. That is right here on earth. God has a good land for us. Uh, when you become a Christian, God has many, many things in store for you. Amen. Amen. And those things that he has in store for you are things that you can experience, but you may never experience, all right, because you don't know or because of so many things that can happen. One day, a certain man was going on a journey because this is the journey that was taken from England to America right and on this journey he 
but he saved all his money so that he could cross because in those days, many of the people, can, can somebody turn off this one that is making noise, please? Somebody? All right. Okay. Are you listening? Can you hear me louder than any, anything else? All right. Um, and this man was taking his journey and as he was taking his journey, he, he managed to save enough money just to buy the ticket. So he bought the ticket and got onto the boat. In those days, they were crossing from England to America. Everybody was trying to go to America. And as you know, it takes a few weeks to cross by ship in those days. So as he was crossing the Atlantic Ocean, he was really, really hungry because he, 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 he didn't have enough money to buy the food from the restaurants on the ship. Do you understand what I mean by the restaurants on the ship? On every ship, there are several restaurants. I've been on a number of ships. I came to Ghana on a, on a ship the first time. SS Papa. <laughs> So, because I was not born here. I was born there and I was shipped here. (laughs) Anyway, so on these ships, which used to be one of the main ways people were traveling in those days, you have different restaurants. One ship that I went on once, there were about 10 floors. You can have 10, you can have 16 floors. Yeah, and a ship. You see it taller at several levels. Restaurants, discos, nightclubs, tennis courts, table tennis. When we were coming to Ghana, my father used to go and play um, table tennis, even some competitions. So there are a lot of things. There are different types of restaurants, snacks, pizza, restaurants, then real restaurants with forks and knife and different levels. Some of the forks and knives are more expensive looking, depending on the type of restaurant that you go into on the ship, and you choose the levels that you want to go to. Do you understand? So this guy had no money to um, attend even one of the restaurants. Yeah. But he he had foreseen that that problem would happen to him. Yeah. So before he embarked on the journey, he went and bought for himself cabin biscuits. Do you know cabin biscuits? They are are biscuits you eat in your cabin. (laughs) Yeah. And he had planned to survive the six week journey with these cabin biscuits. He 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 had foresight. Some people don't have foresight. No. So every day he would drink a little water and eat some of his carbon biscuits and then roam up and down. Look at the people in the restaurants. You see the people enjoying, they were eating chicken. And he began to long for meat because it had been some time since he had eaten any kind of meat. So like chicken or beef or pork like our kebab we have outside. Have you been enjoying the kebab? Don't forget, it's a special first love delight. So, he roamed week after week. He was looking, today he was looking at the chicken restaurant. And then it, it was even giving him an ulcer because when, what happens is that the smell of food stimulates the gastric juices. That is why... You, you tend to feel hungry when you smell food. Yeah, because there's this a reflex. So it, it, it use the smell triggers off whatever in the brain, then it, it causes the stomach, it sends to the vagus nerve to the stomach to increase acid production. And then, so by the time you were getting to the end, you know, um, he was really stomach, having this stomach pain with gas, and then the stomach was getting swollen. Anyway, one day, just as they were approaching America, 
He was standing outside a restaurant. By that time, you could even see they were getting there. He was going into the restaurant, and a, and a guy met him and said, oh, are you not coming in? He's having a, today, he's having a you know, special, whatever. So we are getting to the end of the journey. He said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, why, why, why are you not coming? So, I, 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 I mean, he was shy, but he said, I couldn't afford it. He said, afford what? I said, I can't, I can't afford the restaurant. And the man said, afford what? Restaurant. Afford. He said, but it is included in the ticket. Everybody, everybody here, everybody on the ship is, everybody on the ship is eating free. It's part of the ticket. What are you talking about afford? The man almost dropped dead. You see, his stomach was now bloated. He he was developing an ulcer. Because he didn't know that all these things were included in the package when he bought the ticket. And he had been living in darkness on cabin biscuits for six weeks, longing and yearning for the things in the restaurant not knowing that they were all included in the package. I have some news for you today. That there are many things that are included in the package when you came to Jesus Christ. And I don't want you to get to the end of your life and then you will find out that, oh! Asomwa! Happiness was included. Good marriage was included. Prosperity was included. Spirituality was included. Peace of mind was included. But I didn't know. And you live your whole journey on cabin biscuit Christianity. Not knowing that all these things were included in what God has for you. How many of you are Excited that there are many restaurants included in your package. Yeah, there are many things. And now that God has arrested you, I am happy to inform you that included in the ticket are many, many great things that God has in store for you and for your life. And I want to make sure that you encounter each one. You have to taste this place and taste this one and taste this one and taste this one. Yeah. You know, this story is as real as you can imagine. One day I was on a ship going somewhere. Yeah. I was um, in a, on a particular sea. There are different seas in the world. And I was on a particular sea. And I found out exactly what I'm saying in this story. That many things were included in the ticket that I had bought. This was included. It was free. This was included. It was free. But you would know. And that's why you need teaching. Yeah. Orientation. But unfortunately... When I was going onto that ship, I was late. So the orientation, I missed it. Mm. So I didn't know many of the things that were included. You see, when you miss the orientation on Sunday mornings when we are teaching the word of God, you miss the orientation. Now God is orienting you to your new Christian life. You don't know much about Christianity. So you have a wrong impression about Christianity and about God. And about what it means to be a Christian. It is the greatest blessing and adventure to be a Christian. Hallelujah. So I want you to decide that I'm going to get everything that is included in my package from the Lord. Amen. So this morning, my message is, we've crossed the Jordan River last week. That was the last step into the... Um, 
to the promised land. Somebody should close this door. But today, we are now going to talk about my first hour in the promised land. My first hour. Yeah. My first few hours in the promised land. And today, I'm talking about my first hour. Now that you've crossed the Jordan River, which was the Holy Spirit, to receive the Holy Spirit, to walk through the Holy Spirit, to experience the Holy Spirit, and have the help of the Holy Spirit. Now you step onto the promised land, and all that I'm sharing about is my first hour in the promised land. Hallelujah. Now, what must be done first, in the first hour, in your first hour in the promised land? Turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, in the promised land. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. What does it say? In the beginning, washing of clothes and hanging in the beginning Tom Brown and bread in the beginning jollof jollof with chicken on the side Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 what does it say in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. Amen. In the beginning, God. Everybody say, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Amen. In the beginning, it's always God. So the first hour in the promised land is God's hour. God is at the beginning of every good idea of any good thing. When you go into a room, those of you who are in your rooms, eh, I don't know which hall you are in. In the beginning, the first moment when you step in the room, pray first because you have no idea what has been done in that room before you came there. You may be amazed if you see a vision of that room a few weeks ago before you came there. Yeah, you may be amazed. Amen. Amen. You may be amazed about the evil spirits that are occupying. So the first thing is God. When you came to this school, the first thing is God. God is first. God has never been second and will never accept a second position for anything. Yeah. You know, sometimes when people are playing games, they don't accept the losing. They don't accept to lose. Like how the last time NPP lost, they accepted it. But some people don't accept losing. And this year, we don't know who is going to lose. But one of them is going to lose. Either NBC will lose or NPP will lose. And it will be painful for them. You watch and see. But as for God, he there, he doesn't accept any losing at all. And he's not going to rig anything. He is number one and has always been number one. So he will not accept a second position in anything. He will not accept to be your secondary thought. Yeah, just as some ladies will not accept to be a second wife. Some, la- some, some sisters accept second wife position. Some don't mind. Some don't mind. But God will never accept second position. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And look at verse 33. Or we can read from verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Okay? Now, let us read Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that are included in the ticket eh, shall be added unto you. Everybody underline this verse in your Bible. You must have a Bible. If you belong to this church, you must have a Bible. Ask your neighbor, where is your Bible? Where is your Bible? All right? Now, God is the first thing that you will do in the first hour of your staying in the promised land. Every day, every first hour, every day of your life in the promised land as a Christian, the first hour belongs to God. That's your first hour in the promised land. First few hours in the promised land belongs to God. And if you can make this a habit, a new habit of the promised land, then your life is going to change. Now, anything that is done less than one hour is usually not of much value. That is why lectures last for at least an hour. Even the shortest flights are about an hour. If you, are tra- if you are going somewhere and it is 40 minutes driving, usually they don't say, you don't say I'm traveling. Isn't it true? It's like it becomes really a journey when it's about an hour. That is what, have you ever wondered how they even calculated and said it's an hour? Because the, for the time that F takes to turn around and come 20, 24 hours. So all that period of time, they divided it into hours. 24 of them. 24 of 24 periods. So that most substance, because it wasn't as though it's 24 hours written in the Bible. There's no 24 written in the Bible. We divided it into the, the period that is like the minimum time for almost everything that is done substantially minimum that makes sense is about an hour there's no film a good film that is less than an hour yeah usually about an hour and a bit or more than an hour everything is divided into hours yeah there is nothing substantial listen to me that is done for five minutes we've gone for a lecture five minutes when you come, so our lecture lasts five minutes. So, is it a lecture? Our lecture was 25 minutes. What lecture is that? Lectures, tutorials, one hour. Everything, I mean, when it's even short, at the point you realize that one hour is short. Yeah, a film. I mean, what, what, name it. The minimum time for all those things is one hour. That is why the time that human beings have divided for themselves has been divided into periods called hours, of which there are 24 in a day. And God lays claim always to the first of everything. The first of your time, and the first of your money, and the first of your life, and the first child, And the first of everything is always belonging to God. And he will never give up that first for a second thing. That is why those who serve God properly serve him first. And after they do other things. You cannot put God at a second place. He will not accept it. Somebody may accept it. There are many people who accept to be your third girlfriend. Your fourth girlfriend. Your 15th girlfriend. 114th girlfriend. They accept it. But God does not accept to be anything second. So if you are going to seriously put God in his real position, in this promised land that you have entered, you are going to have to give him the first of the day and the first hour. There are 24 of them. It's not even a tithe. (laughs) Amen. Turn with me to Matthew 26. Matthew 
Matthew 26. And verse 37. And then he took with him, are you listening? The two sons of Zebedee and began to be very sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, Amen? Amen. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Amen. Amen. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And he said unto Peter, What? Circulate the word what? What a shock! Could you not watch with me one hour? Could you not stay awake when I'm praying at the most critical moment of my life and ministry? You are called supposed to be my assistant, I have appointed you last week. Huh? But Peter was appointed. He, and this was a word he gave to Peter. He said, and he said unto Peter, what a shock. Matthew 16, you were appointed by chapter 26, you are finished. No more prayers from you for just an hour. What? Can you not pray for one hour? Look, let me tell you something. From my experience as a Christian, there is nothing valuable that is less than an hour. Yeah, spiritual. If it's less than an hour, usually you are not serious. I can know that you are not serious if you don't have one hour. When I say one, I mean one hour without phone calls, texts, Whatsapps, Skypes, Facebooking, emailing, television, chatting, talking, one hour with God. Yeah, one hour with God. It's not, you have not started, you are not serious. You are not serious. Take it from me. You see, if you want to be a real Christian, own up. I said, own up. If you don't want to, eh, then own up. Let's stop playing in between. We are not joking here. The songs we are singing are Christian songs. We are not playing half and half, whatever. When you say quiet time, our brother was leading us this morning. And he was telling us that some people, for their quiet time, they watch pornography. Yeah. It's true. It's come, Brother Frank. True or not true? It's true, Bishop. It's true. Where did you see it? <laughs> I was concerned. Yeah, that was level 200 when I was did fast tracking. You were going for fast tracking? Yes, please. And then what happened? Yeah, but then the people had not come, so and the cosmos told me that we should go and then uh, call the people to come. So we entered the room, and lo and behold, there was a guy who was watching. <laughs> what time of the day? Early in the morning, Bishop, around, let's say, around 8.30, 9, there about. 8.30? Yeah. He was having his quiet time. Exactly. And what was he, what type of quiet time? <laughs> the quiet time was... Watching pornography and smoking at the same time. And smoking at the same time. Yes, so he would smoke and then he'll watch. <laughs> hey! Yeah. This is what he was having for his quiet time. Sit down. And how long will one such 
pornographic film lasts for? How long does it last? Huh? Five minutes? Five minutes? Who, who has watched one before? Raise your hand. You see, Christianity includes honesty. Raise your hand. Bef- yeah. How long does it last? Huh? Over one hour. Yeah. How can it be that when it comes to God, then God is going to get five minutes whilst you are dressing he does the five minutes that you are giving to God and whilst you are doing your hair and everything that's the five minutes that God gets at dressing time no 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 you cannot say that you are giving those five minutes that's not how to operate in the promised land now that you step foot in the promised land you need to dedicate the first, and that's why I said, this my message, my message is, my, the first hour. My first hours or my first hour in the promised land is to spend the one hour with God. That's what we call quiet time. Quiet time has a conglomerate of activities that can be uh, uh, included. But mainly, There are three main things that you're supposed to do in that one hour. Now, you need to develop this as a serious and important habit. Because once you get into a new dimension of life, you need to develop new habits. For instance, many of you don't cook. Ladies, isn't it true? Raise up your hand if it's true. Stand up if it is true. Yeah, over here in this section here. Stand up if it is true. Is it true or not true? Sure, it is true. Is it true or not true? Sure, it is true. Yes. So instead of cooking, what do you do? Sure, go and buy food. You buy food. <laughs> and what do you do instead of cooking? You just put one or two things together. Quick food like soaking something. <laughs> and, and what do you do? Um, you call a friend who has food and just go and fetch. <laughs> You call a friend who has food and go and perch. Okay. Now, when you get married, come, three of you, come. Stand here. Let us say that you are the bride. Come, Rosina, stand here. Come, wait, let me find a, 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 a bridegroom for you. Come. Okay. Frank. Okay. Supposing I say you are now husband and wife, amen. amen. And then I say, okay, go this way, go. Two of hold his hand and go. Amen. Now, how many agree with me that she has to develop some new habits in this new life that she has entered? You cannot be calling friend to go and perch when your husband is by your side. Is that what you are going to do? No, please. If you continue those old ways, do you think he's going to be happy with you? Will you be happy with her? Not at all, Bishop. <laughs> what are you expecting from her? I'm expecting someone who will cook something delicious for me to enjoy. Something like what? My favorite, My favorite is fufu with granola soup. You, you'll be expecting what? I'll be expecting some fufu with granola soup. Some fufu with granola yeah. <laughs> soup. You cannot, you cannot be going to preaching, eh? Okay. Come here. And stand here. Mark, come. Yeah, so, no, stand on the right side. And put your hands in this. Yeah, on, on, no, no, this way. No, that's not how we marry. Look, like this. <laughs> Like it, aha, very good. Together we declare you husband and wife in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, how many think we need to develop some new habits? What were you what would you say you do? I went buy food. Buy buy food. Yes. Mark, is that what you are expecting? At all, Bishop. I had plans for food. What type what are you expecting? I'm expecting pork, pork, pork. Mm. That, no, no, that's this. We start with starters. Hey. Hey. So, 
Those of you who don't know how to cook, people are expecting starters. Starters. <laughs> you sit there and say you'll be buying food. People are expecting starters. Yeah, yeah. And what else? Quickly. Yeah, banku with okro soup. Banku with okro soup. Okro soup. The stretching one. Stretching. Mm. And what else? And it has to have some meat. Certain things, such mm. as what? Number mm. one. Goat meat. Goat meat. Or maybe chicken. Chicken. Wele, wele. Yeah, wele. wele. It's not bad, yes. Nya. Crab, crab, yeah. Crab, crab. Crab, I don't Nya. like fish. I don't okay, like wah. 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 Yes, I don't like fish. What about snails? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snails too are not bad. Yeah, snails. Yeah. All right. And dessert. And you say you'll be what? You say you'll be doing what? Bye bye. Ah, I'll beat you just now. You see. Boy, How many wanted to develop some new habits? Yeah, you cannot enter marriage with those old habits. Once you step into the promised land of marriage, you'll be sitting there saying you'll be buying food. Before you realize your husband will send you back to your mother. Brother, come. Your, your name is what? Philip. Philip. Okay. Hold her in properly. <laughs> wow. And together in the name of the Father and the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Brother, you said you'll be doing what? I'm soaking. Soaking. Hey, are we prisoners? Are you a prisoner? I'm going to be doing soaking. Soaking, Gary. Brother, what are you expecting? So no, 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 no. Fufu. Uh, Fufu. With some light soup. Light soup. Some goat meat. Goat meat. Some beef. Some beef. A canteen. A canteen. <laughs> light soup. And you are planning to make Gary. <laughs> Gary with cheeto. <laughs> so cute. Sugar and milk. <laughs> and granuts. Shall we beat her? <laughs> Look, people have eaten that in secondary school. Uh, as he's planning to marry, he has certain visions and dreams. So there are some new habits. And when you marry and you are going home together after church, you may have come to dance. But this brother, whether you dance or you didn't dance, when he gets home, He's expecting certain things. So when you get there, you can't say, look, we were all dancing in church. I'm very tired. Is that what you will accept? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you will not accept it. Not at all. I wish you gave me something that I'll be happy with. Yeah. You gave me some food. Yeah. And then, after that, they will expect sex. Yeah. What about you? Yes, Bishop. I even paid an offering crowd and the Reverend prayed. You prayed what? I went to pay a seed for my wife. And the Reverend prayed and he was like, after she cooks good food for me, she'll be like, Mark come and mark my body for me. Hey! 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 hey. hey. You see the visions and hey. <laughs> <laughs> sown a seed yeah. apart from prayers he has sown a seed yeah. that after eating yeah. his wife will say come and mark my body yeah. with what paint or what uh, anything anything, anything. anything. Wow. Uh, mark, come and mark my body yeah. uh, I thought he's called mark yeah. uh, his name is mark so he will mark a body yeah. hey. <laughs> you see the dreams that they are having yeah. Yeah. so those of you sisters who are praying for marriage Listen to the visions and dreams. <laughs> and then you, will you expect him to be having sex? Yes, we shall. After such powerful prayers as you did in the morning. <laughs> will you be? Yes, we shall. After, um, after the wedding, after eating, I mean, just putting a movie we're enjoying and then... Okay, give the new husbands and wife a clap offering. You can go and sit down. Wow. Expectations. 
visions and dreams. So you, you need to modify your life and adjust very quickly. Otherwise, you start to fail from day one. And I'm explaining to you that when you enter the promised land of God, you must modify instantly. God becomes number one. And he becomes the person with whom you spend one hour praying. And when you pray in tongues, you can also read your Bible. You can also read other books. So there are three main things that you must spend one hour doing. Number one, prayer. Really praying to the Lord. Number two, reading the word of God. Amen. And then number three, reading books, Christian books, not news, not joy online, FM online. Reading Christian books that are about the word of God. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. So you must decide as a Christian that I'm going to spend my first one hour doing these three things. Now, I want to just give you one reason for each of these. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Amen. Amen. And he that prophesies edifies the church. So he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself or charges himself up like a battery. Now, every day as you go along, you discharge power. Amen. Power and anointing goes out of you. That is why when Elijah gave the stick to um, his servant, he said, don't talk to anybody on the way. Because as you speak, you discharge and transmit the power of God that is in you, if there is any. When the power is finished, you start to transmit all sorts of other things. Now, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and power. So as you speak, power is going out of you. Do you understand? And you become more and more powerless. More and more powerless. More and more and more power. As you speak, as you interact. And the Bible says that in the multitude of words, there is uselessness, vanity. Do you understand? And the Bible also teaches us, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Let me show you something. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath and neither give place to the devil. Verse 28. Let him not stole steal no more. Okay? But rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Now notice verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So he says, don't let any corrupt communication go out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. So it means that there are certain times when you speak, it, it even builds you up. Like as I'm preaching, it will build you up. But then there's also speaking that lowers your spirituality. If there is speaking that builds you up, there is speaking that breaks you down. Sometimes you speak to somebody, you feel discouraged after. Sometimes you speak to somebody, you feel insulted. Sometimes you speak to somebody, you feel useless. Sometimes you speak to somebody, you feel lifted up. So speaking generally takes you up or down. 
That's why when I first became a pastor, I found it difficult to speak to people if I was going to preach. Because as you speak, as you interact, as you lay hands, as you talk to people, you discharge the power of God. So you become more and more empty. Why would the Bible say be filled with the Spirit? Be being filled with the Spirit if you are not always discharging the Spirit. Why would you need to be filled? Again and again and again. If you are once filled, it's okay. But that is not the case. You have to be filled all the time. And be filled. Because we, when, when you meet somebody, you feel de-anointed. There are people who de-anoint you. Just one interaction. There are people who make you fall. Are there not people who can make you fall? Yeah. I met a brother once. I met a brother once and he told me because he was not getting married he he was in a relationship with a sister you know and every day they were in a relationship their relationship they were were not getting married they were not getting married they were not getting so why wouldn't you marry why wouldn't you marry you know then one day i called i called the brother and the sister every time they just stand quietly they don't say anything so one day i called the brother alone and i said why do you not like her do you not like her in fact up to today I, i i don't think that that the sister is even married. I said, do you not like the sister? He said, oh, I, I like her. I, I mean, I liked her. Then I said, what is the real reason why you are not making any move? You see, those of you who get into relationships, you know, when you see a brother who says, I'll marry you in five years, I'll marry you in four years, don't, don't, don't waste your time with such people. When somebody wants to marry you, he wants to marry you now. Yeah, now. In fact, my father-in-law was a very experienced person when i proposed to my wife and then she his, he got to know my father my wife's father got to know and he got to know that i wanted to marry now then he said oh he's a good person yeah a good people want to marry you now what they don't want to sin they 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 know that relationships can break when long relationships they break they are practical and they are very determined committed and they are focused on you so you see that one say, oh, can I want to marry? So I want to marry now. So I'm going, I'll finish when I finish my first degree in 2016. Then I'll go and do masters in America. And then we will marry in 2022. Hey. And you'll be sitting down there waiting for a man who has multilateral love. Because a man has multidirectional love capabilities. Multidirectional. He can love many, many girls. Yeah. The girls are more unidire- unidirectional, but the brother there is multidirectional. Yeah. He uh, can love you, can love. That's why they can marry so many wives. Each wife who comes into the chamber, they tell them sweet nothings. <laughs> Everybody says sweet nothings. Sweet nothings. Yeah. They, they speak sweet nothings to them, each of the wives. Yeah. And they, each one feels he's the, she's the best. So, a multidirectional capability, brother, who says, I want now. That's the that's real one. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? I was, I was explaining something to you. Yeah. So this brother said he didn't want to mar- marry the lady. And I said, why? Then he, he told me, after a long sit, he said, Bishop, the truth is that when I met this girl, I was a virgin. When I met her, I, the brother, I was a virgin. I, the brother, I was a virgin. But after interacting with her, I have lost my virginity. So because of that, he was now in a state of uncertainty about her. That is she really a good person or a bad person? Yeah. You see, there are people you meet, you discharge anointing. Discharge. Power you see that you are de- an- de-anointed. De- de-anointed. You speak, you know, so the anointing has come. You can meet a, an, an agent of Satan on the way to church. A quarrel will come and see that the spirit has left you. Yeah. That is why husbands and wives are often provoked to quarrel on Saturdays when the husbands are pastors. The most common time, if you want to catch a pastor quarreling, call him on Saturday. Yeah. You, they usually quarrel on Saturdays and they make up on Sunday after church. Yeah, it's demonic. It's to de-anoint them. And, and cause the person to step on the wrong foot. So you are discharged all the time. Discharging all the time anointings. 
So you need to be charged up for the day. Yeah, I can't imagine you spending less than one hour. And you must practice it. In this school, don't say I don't have my own room. You can lie on your bed and cover your face with, face with a pillow and pray into the pillow. That's what I used to do. In a Chimota school, I didn't have a private room. I was in the dormitory. And I used to pray on my bed. I prayed into the pillow. People had pornography. Once people are having pornography, one guy, he made his mattress with pornography magazines. Yeah, the whole mattress was pornography magazines and he slept on it. Yeah. In secondary school. People are doing all sorts of things and there are all sorts of temptations. The spirit is willing, but the flesh, your flesh is weak. How many have realized that your flesh is really, 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 really weak? Really, really weak. And so that is why Jesus told his disciples, pray in case, lest you fall. The word lest is an old English word, but it means in case. (laughs) In case you fall into temptation, pray. So that when you fall into temptation, you'll be strong. I never knew that prayer helps you fight temptation. Till... A day that I was fast, I was fasting. The first time I tried to fast three days without eating or drinking anything, even water, no water, no nothing, just fasting. By the third day, which was Sunday, I was paralyzed on my bed because I didn't pray, I was just fasting. I, I was just fasting. So by the third day, I was lying flat. So much so that, and God, I believe God did it to teach me a lesson. Because on the Sunday afternoon, which was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the fast was ending at 6 o'clock. My mother came to visit me in school, at Chimota School, house 18. So she parked outside the house. And then they came to call me, and I was in my box room. And I was lying on a bed with a brother with whom I was fasting. Where two of us were doing that three-day fast. He had also collapsed, and I was also collapsed. And we were both, we were both lying on the bed. We were, can you imagine a school bed? Two, two people were lying on it. We couldn't move. I couldn't move. I was, I was paralyzed. So they came to call. Dad, 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 your mother is here. My mother had come to visit me from the house with her car, with food and everything. Your mother is outside. Come, your mother is gone. And the window was behind my head. I said, okay. <laughs> I've heard. My mother waited and waited and waited. Yeah. I couldn't get up. I couldn't move my leg off the bed like this. I couldn't stand. It's not a joke. Then they came to call me again. Your mother is, do you know that your mother is there? Do you know that your mother is outside? And I said, Tell my mother to give the, the thing to you. The, the homemade food. The homemade food. She should give it to you. I could not even open the door. The small room like this. Small room. I was so weak. My flesh was weak. A few weeks later, I decided to do it again. I'm going to try this. Then this time, I had an idea. I said, I will pray in the morning, very early in the morning, and see what will happen. I woke up at 4 a.m. Three days, the same exact, same three-day type of fast, without water, without food, without anything. I was upright like this. I was walking. I was strong. The third day I was moving, nothing was wrong with me. I had a completely opposite experience. That is where I learned for myself that praying has an effect on your capabilities physically. That's why Jesus said, pray, because after the flesh it is weak. But when you pray, it has an effect on your flesh capabilities. So if you're always doing pornography, this thing, Facebook that is doing wrong, internet something, all the things that you are struggling with, when you actually pray, it has an effect on your ability to stop those things. Because my flesh couldn't even get up. My flesh couldn't even walk. My flesh couldn't even sit. 
My flesh couldn't even go to my mother, even out of respect. My mother has driven from Osu and has come with food. It's packed outside. Everybody says, your mother is calling and I'm in the box room. I can't get up physically. I can't. When I came up the bed, I rolled to the floor. Yeah, that's how weak we were. But I tried it again and again. Each time I knew. And you see, when you don't pray and you fast, all the headaches. All those are signs of a lack of praying to a point where it strengthens you. So you see, those of you who are going around without charging yourself up, singing without praying, doing spiritual things without praying, you are discharged and powerless. I'm telling you, you are powerless. So the first hour in the promised land must be with God and you must pray. Spend one hour praying. What? Can you not pray for one hour? I don't accept it as a Christian. There is nothing that is important that is done for less than an hour. If, if it is good, it will be done for at least one hour. At least one hour. At least one hour. Now some, nah, but we don't get up early because you don't sleep early. That's why you can never get up early. When I went to Yongicho, I found out that the reason why Yongicho is able to pray every day for three hours, he said for the last 40 years, I've been praying for three hours every day. Because he sleeps around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, you see that he's asleep. So they can get up at 3 a.m. and he prays till 6. By 6 o'clock, when we are all going, he has prayed for three hours whilst you are there dry. How many have been moving out dry? Raise your hand if it has happened to you over and over. Even this morning, you come out dry. How many came out dry this morning? Raise your hand. Dry, dry, dry. <laughs> it's because you don't sleep early. Amen. So as for me, I don't want to lie to you. That today, most of us are not as spiritual as our spiritual fathers. You are just a watered down version of what you should be. You are a lower version. Just like instead of people are having higher versions, you are becoming lower versions because you are not prayerful. You don't have time with God. You don't pray as you You don't spend the one hour, minimum one hour. Christianity is one hour. One hour with God. If not, forget it. Five minute prayer, five minutes, oh God, five minutes. I'll just look at the scripture and then I walk away. You are joking. Did you hear me? So I want you to dedicate one hour. If you cannot do it in the morning, do it in the afternoon. So some of you don't have time. Look at the school, how they have spoiled the school. Some of you have only six lectures in a week. Six times a week only you have lectures. Some of you have no lectures at all on Fridays. No lecture at all on Fridays. Some of you have no lectures on Mondays. Some of you have no lectures on Wednesday. And still you can't have one hour with God. You are not disciplined and you are not pulling yourself together to be a serious Christian. Christianity is not just jumping and dancing around and fooling around. It's not an alternative to beach parties. It is a spiritual experience serving God and following God. Can I have an amen from somebody who is here? How many are going to follow God seriously? My first hour. My first hour. I said my first hour in the promised land is going to be spent with God. Turn to Psalm 109. Turn to Psalm 109. We are ending. Sorry, Psalm 119. Why did I say Psalm? So, prayer is the first thing that you are going to do in that wonderful one hour. The second important thing, just three elements in this first hour. Prayer, and especially when you pray in tongues, you can do other things at the same time. Even when you are praying in English, you can pray, you can do the second thing. The second thing is the word. The reading of the Bible. There is no, all my books are inferior to the Bible. The Bible is the most important book. And all my books that I have written are books based on the Bible. I'm just trying to explain a few of the verses in the great Bible that we have. My, my book cannot be compared to the Bible. It's not even, in, it's not near to the Bible. The Bible, Psalm 109 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Every day you switch on the light of your life. 
Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Every day. Switch on the light. Don't you switch on the light every day? So I switched it on two years ago, so it must be on. Look at the campus. They are having beach parties. Beach parties. What time do they leave for the beach parties? Four, five. Around five. How many buses are going? Like maybe 10, 13 big the Metro Mass buses. 10 Metro Mass buses are leaving 13 buses. And they leave from where? Um, Bishop, they leave like five and they go out in the night, Kaswa, far places. To the beach? Yes. 13 buses full of students to Pram Pram, to the beach. And they leave at five o'clock. Huh? And how do they advertise for these buses, Cadella? Tell me. Um, Bishop, please, they have posters that comes out like maybe three weeks before the end. With sent like maybe um, a lady on it with a bikini and she has pumped her breast like the last beach party um Ivan Dier and yeah Bomeka and they title the beach parties with um the latest song like Kalu I think it's the latest song Kalu is the name of the beach party yes and what was the other beach party called Bomeka Bomeka Bo- Bome- like a guy should like <laughs> Bomeka. Spend money, Spend on, money me. on me. Beach parties. And then the boys come and dance around inviting. Yes, please. And um, the last one I witnessed, Aliman. The boys were screeching with their cars. It was even raining. They were screeching. Some had taken off their tops, drinking. Then the girls were just coming downstairs to them. Like... And some go naked? Yes. Naked? Yes. How, how naked? Um, they take off their shorts. They're just feeling free. Yeah. And then... They are inviting the whole campus, and you have 13 mass metro buses full of students being taken to Pram Pram in the evening to the beach to do what? You see, that's what I'm saying. That if you are a believer eh, in this dark and evil age, you better stand and do the thing properly. Otherwise, you're going to be a half, half and half something. But they are not joking. When we are doing carnival and we are campaigning, look at, I mean, if you, if you, the lecturers on the camp, instead of them to support what we are doing, when we are evangelizing, they're rather opposing, opposing it. And then you have 13 buses full of little children, 19 year old, 18 year old, 20 year old, people who don't know their left from their right, being taken to parties on the beach. I mean, who has heard of a party in the beach in the night? And what time do they come back? And Bishop, it's like 12 a.m. in the morning. 2 a.m., 4 a.m. Uh, do some come at 4? Yeah, the party is in the beach in the night. And the buses come in the morning, like Anakazo until evening, until it gets. The Anakazo people too. The bus comes in the morning, early in the morning. So they'll be honking and all that till it's full in the evening. 40 buses. Lego Hall, how many? Legon Hall Beach is the best beach known on campus. It has not less than 30 buses. And they are full. And people also follow with their private cars. People come from tech. Yeah, look at that. We are doing carnival. Inviting people. Should we not do more carnivals and more and more and more and more and more and more? And if you are a Christian and you are not going to take the word of God very seriously and spend one hour to charge yourself when there are spiritual powers of darkness moving all over the campus trying to destroy people's lives trying to kill them trying to inject them with HIV and drugs and teach them the evil ways and you must rather rise up and strengthen yourself with your first hour in the promised land with the Lord, always don't joke with it don't joke with your Christian if you play around right now you will see yourself in a metro bus on the way to a beach to receive your private injection of HIV, you will be surprised what will happen to you. You sit here and, and think that you are, you, are, you are juggling, you are joking with your very life when you don't spend that time with God. You are joking, you are joking, you are joking with your life. I said you are joking with your life. You are juggling with your life. And the last thing is still in Ephesians. If we are, and if we are not go to. How many want light? When boys are inviting you to Metro Mass, Bus, uh, whatever party, you need light for your life. And then the last thing you do 
during your quiet time is books, other Christian books, because that's the anointing of the teacher. Sometimes when you read the Bible, you don't understand my Bible. When you are reading a book, sometimes it explains the verses. Then when you explain the verses, you go back to the Bible and read the Bible to understand the verse. Because of you, God has made you nice, he has made you pretty, he has made you handsome. You misuse it, you are fooling around, you are playing with your life. I feel it in my soul. Look at that in Ephesians chapter 4. He says, he gave, he, he, he gave gifts. Look at verse 8. Therefore he ascended up and he left captivity captive and he gave gifts. What's the gift God has given you? What's the gift? Everybody say gift. Yes. What is the gift? The gift is read down in verse 11. Ephesians 4. We are ending. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. So a teacher of the word of God is a gift. So when you have a book in your hand, a book you can read, it's a gift that God has given to you to help you to understand the word of God, to even know what is in the Bible. Because I understood the word of God by, 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 by gifts. Like Kenneth Hagin, Fred Price. When I listen to them preach, I understand the Bible more. Then I read more. Without having this assistance. You see, why would God give you this assistance if it was not necessary? Why would there be teachers if it's not necessary? Since you can read it for yourself. How many have read the Bible you didn't understand much? Tell the truth. Oh no, she, she. You read it, you didn't understand. Oh, open the doors. I think the sound has gone now. Yeah, you don't understand. Please, I want to tell you something, my friends. God wants you to take him very seriously. My first hour is to be spent praying, reading the word of God and getting light. Because all outside is darkness. And then receiving the teachers, the gift of the pastor and the teacher with the books that you have. That's why I gave you books. And I give you, and that's why you have books. It will help you. You will always understand the Bible better. You go faster. Can you imagine if you went to school, you didn't learn, go to school, just do physics in the house. You just hold the book and read physics. And you're going to do wasi or whatever, but just personal reading. How many did that? How many just stayed at home and read personal chemistry reading in the house? Will you go far? Then why is it that when it comes to the, the word of God, you just want to personally read the Bible when there are things that have been given for you to understand? Did you ever do that with either physics, chemistry, geography, literature? Was there even one subject you did without a teacher? Then how come when it comes to the things of God, that one rather you are doing without it? Don't joke with your life. Please, young people, eh, I want to tell you, this is your most beautiful. If you are not beautiful now, then it's, it's, it's unfortunate because this is the most beautiful. If you are not handsome now, then it's not going to get better. This is it. This is it. This is you. This is as best that it's going to be. Hey. Are you going to juggle with your life? Shall I tell you one more story? There was an Italian man who went to America and he worked for a long time and he was coming back. He was a juggler. Because I've been saying the word juggle, juggle, juggle the whole day. So I, I remember the story about juggling. He was a juggler. He could throw so many balls up like that. So as they were coming on the ship, just like the guy with the cabin biscuits, he was also on the same ship, but he was coming back to Europe from America. He had finished work and got all his money. He was on his way back. Yeah. So on his way back, they were bored on the ship. So one day he was walking around and he saw some, a young boy juggling. And people had gathered around, they were watching. So he was excited because since he was a professional juggler. So he went and he said, Oh, give me the thing, let me do for you. So he took the balls, started juggling. He said, give me one more. Three, four. Give me one more. Five, six. And he was on the ship on the open deck. Seven. Then the Italians. No, they are very good. The circus, we came, they came, they were Italians. 
Eight balls, ten balls. He was just playing. Big, more crowds came out and they clapped for him. Wow, whoa, 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 whoa. The man was very happy and himself came. Hmm. So, after he was doing it, the people were clapping. He wanted to do something even more fantastic. Because himself had come. So he said, he said to the people, I'll show you something. Just wait for me. So he ran. He said, wait. They, they all waited. He ran downstairs to his cabin. When he went to work in America, all the money that he had, he had bought a big diamond. Glittering diamond like that. One diamond. You see, one, I, had an, I used to have an office in my, a diamond in my office. That was 25 million pounds, dollars. It's just a copy, but not the real one. That's a copy. But it's quite big. That's quite, so he had used all his money to buy that diamond. So he went down. God, he was excited with the juggling. Do you understand? Do you understand the story I'm telling you? He was excited about the juggling. And I'm saying that some of you are juggling your life. So he brought the diamond that he had worked all his life struggles put together that he had used to buy that diamond. And he was taking it back to Italy. And he brought it. The people were all waiting. And he came and he lifted up the diamond and said, look at this. And it was glittering in the sun, flash. He said, do you believe that I can juggle? And the people said, ah. Yeah, he said, oh, said the pro- I can do. So he took the diamond. Listen, I said, some of you are juggling with a diamond. You see, you don't even want me to finish the story. Because the story is not going to end in a good way. <laughs> this is the man who has been juggling 15 balls. He took the diamond. Do you believe I can juggle that? And he said, yes. So he started with the balls. He mixed it, and the thing will go up in there. Shiny like that. Shiny like that. It was going up, up, up. Have you been on a ship before? Because today is a ship service. Suddenly the ship went like this, you know, the, the water. So the balance that he had, that he was using to whatever, he missed the diamond when he was coming up because the, the ship went like this. And the diamond came out and missed his hand and then hit the. And I told you where they were, they were on the ship. So he hit the ground and started like this and then went and fell. And went into the water and they saw the diamond going down into the sea. Oh no, 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 no. No, his whole life. His whole life. He juggled with it. I said he juggled. Did you hear me? I said he juggled. He played. He played with his very life. All that his life was in that one thing. He played. You don't play with your life. Don't play with your life, young, young boy. Don't play. Don't play with your life. It's your life. It's everything you have. Don't play. Don't play the fool with your life. God is arresting you. And he's telling you. There are many things included in what he's going to do for you. And don't juggle. Don't play. Spend your first one hour. My first hour in the promised land. Not my first five minutes. Not my first 20 seconds. My first hour is for God. I will pray in tongues. I will read my Bible. I will read my teacher's books. And I will be taught. I'm not going to play with my very life. May you spend the first hour of your life in the promised land. Doing what God wants you to do with your life. And may you never juggle your life away. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, are you a juggler, by the way? Are you a juggler? Tell your neighbor, I sense some juggling aspect about you. About you. Look, I want you to make a t-shirt, no juggling, eh? No juggle, no jugglers in the first love chat. We are not juggling. Are you a juggler? Are you a juggler? No Some of you are juggling with, with that boy. You are juggling. You are juggling. You are juggling with that girl. You wait and see what will happen. Lift your hands to the Lord. Thank God for his word today. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your blessing. We receive your holy word today in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray, everybody, just pray for a moment because I sense the juggling spirit. Plain, 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 plain. Plain. There can be an accident. There can be. The boat can shift and move. There can be a mistake. Don't juggle with your life. Father, thank you for your deliverance. Your mercies. Mande paralamba la bashanda la mamanda la babanda la. Elembere le meshinda la babanda la babanda la babanda la babanda la babanda la. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ for your great mercy that you show to us. Hallelujah. Mambo santa la marana la babanda la babanda la. Hallelujah. Mambo la babanda la babanda la babanda la babanda la. Shenda la basanda la babanda la babanda la babanda la. Oh yes. Put your hand on your heart and dedicate your, f- your one hour. Well, even if it's not the first one hour, it's one hour. It's to God. Dedicate your one hour. Say, tell God, God, I am dedicating one whole hour. Every day, it is for you. Nothing less. It may be more, but at least one hour. I speak, speak to God right now for a moment and pray that God should strengthen and help you for an hour with God every day. Father, thank you. We will spend at least one solid hour with you, serving you, praying to you, looking to you, learning from you, hearing, praying to you for strength, charging ourselves up in the spirit, filling ourselves with the spirit of God, being strengthened in the spirit. Thank you for this great grace and blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, if you are here, you don't, you have not received the Holy Spirit, you don't speak in tongues. I want you to come to the front. I want to pray with you. Yesterday, last week, I prayed for a lot of people. All right. But before, before you come to the front, just every head bow, every eye closed. If you are here today, you are not born again. You are not born again. What do I mean by born again? That if you die tomorrow, or even this afternoon, or let's say tonight, you die. And you, will you go to heaven or hell? Are you born again? The Bible says, unless a man is born again, he cannot go to heaven. All right? Just stand. If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God today. Please help me and pray with me. I don't want to juggle my life away. If you are here like that, wherever you are sitting or standing, just lift your right hand so that I can pray with you. God bless you. Just lift it up high. I see your hands. I see so many hands. Pastor, please pray with me. I I know that I'm not sure. I don't even know God. I don't know. Maybe if I die today or tomorrow, I don't know whether I'll go to heaven or hell. God bless you. Lift it up high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see so many hands. Pastor, help me to know Jesus Christ today as my Savior. Then lift your hand. God bless you. Now, if you've lifted your hand, come to the front here. I'm going to pray with you in the front here. Come. Come to me. Just come. Come here. Come here. Come to me in the front here. Let me pray with you. God bless you. Come from wherever you are standing. There's a lady down there. You know in your heart, if you die tomorrow, die today, you don't know whether you go to heaven or hell. Come. Come and let me pray with you. Come to Jesus. God bless you. Stand here. Stand here. Stand here. Come. Come from wherever you are. Pastor, help me. I don't want to juggle. I don't want to fool. I don't want to juggle my life. I want Jesus Christ. God bless you. Hallelujah. All right. Listen, I'm going, to, I'm going to do this for the last time. Close your eyes, everybody. There is somebody here. I sense it in my heart. You are not sure and you know I'm giving you the last chance. If you are here, you want to give your life to God, this is your chance. Don't fool. Don't play. Don't juggle. I'm giving you one more chance. God, I want to take you seriously from today. I want to be born again. I want to know you and I want to serve you seriously and properly. If you are here like that, lift up your hand right now and walk here now. I'm giving you the last chance. This is the last chance I'm about to pray. Come now, now, now. Don't think about tomorrow. Come now, now. This is God is calling you now. Don't fool with your life. Come, 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 come. Quickly, don't fool with your life. Come and stand here. Stand right here. Stand here. You are here. Don't juggle. Don't play. This is your life. Come now. Come now. I know 
what I'm saying. I say, don't fool with your life. Come now. Come to God now. Blessed Savior. Alright, lift your hands up in front here. Close your eyes. Everybody join in this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I'm tired of fooling. I'm tired of juggling. I don't want to fool anymore. I don't want to juggle anymore. Today, I come to you just as I am. Oh God, have mercy on me. Oh Jesus, please wash away my sins with your precious blood. I confess that I am a sinner. I confess it. I know I am a sinner. Oh God, have mercy on me. Please have mercy on me. Please write my name in the book of life. From today, from today, I belong to God and I will follow God. I will follow Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving me today. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. I believe in you, Lord. Please accept me as your child. In Jesus' name. Now say this prayer after me. Say, Satan, listen carefully. From today, I have stopped following you. Satan, from today, I will not serve you again. Satan, I reject you. Satan, I reject you. Satan, I refuse you. I belong to Jesus Christ. And I will serve Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving me today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.